I'm Dr. Joseph Caprini from Chicago in the United States. First of all, it's a, indeed a great pleasure to be here. And I was born and raised in Philadelphia and educated in uh, both uh, Philadelphia and also in Chicago where I completed a residency in general and vascular surgery and following that a fellowship in uh, non-malignant hematology. And from there, uh, after several years in the military service, I uh, began a practice in Chicago and uh, did general vascular surgery plus also uh, ran a coagulation laboratory and over the next 25 years we saw about 100,000 patients. Our specialty was looking for bleeding and clotting problems in the surgical patients but then that branched out to include venous thromboembolism. Uh, over the years I have uh, conducted a number of research activities, but none more uh, rewarding than the Caprini score. This score uh, lists the, all of the risk factors for blood clots and assigns a weight to each of those risk factors. This score would have not been possible without the help of many other people who helped me along the way. It's too bad that their names can also not be associated with the score. I'm here today to discuss the score and various aspects of it. The, uh, the importance of this uh, risk assessment is that it takes pay people and instead of putting them all in a pool, separates out those people into three categories. The first category is those patients who are at low risk and should be spared anticoagulation since the risks of bleeding exceed the risks of the anticoagulant to prevent blood clots. The second group of patients is patients that indeed have risk factors and should be given prophylaxis. The third group is those patients who are at such a high risk of thrombosis that they should be given prophylaxis after they uh, are released from the hospital, what people fail to understand is that there are low risk procedures such as arthroscopy of the knee or simple laparoscopy. And these procedures by themselves do not cause very, uh, a, a very high incidence of blood clots. In fact, it's very, very low. Unfortunately, a number of people, young people for example, who have risk factors can be very, very at risk to develop a thrombosis. So they can be at very high risk because they may have a family history of thrombosis, they may be overweight, they may be smokers, they may uh, be taking hormones, birth control pills, and, and all of those things together can add up to someone developing a blood clot. On the other hand, there are patients that are higher risk for the procedure but they don't have as many risk factors. Using this score system, one enables uh, the doctor to protect people at all times from blood clots by sparing those that do not need a lot of anticoagulation. I'd like to further amplify this question because I'm very indebted to the Chinese. They uh, were uh, longtime investigators of the Caprini score and I frequently receive requests from China for students, fellows, pharmacists and physicians questions about the score and they have been very active in their analysis of this score and by the way have produced the best evidence to date that the score is valuable not only for surgical patients but also for medical patients. First of all, the American College of Surgeons has instituted a program approximately 15 years ago that is entitled NISQIP, the National Surgical Quality Improvement Project, NSQIP. With this project, hospitals were invited to hire a research nurse who would track 23 surgical complications for 30 days in a group of patients at the hospital. Over 10 million patients have been placed in the National Surgical Quality Improvement Database. 
and individual investigators can query the database for specific problems. For example, what is the incidence of venous thromboembolism in patients undergoing laparoscopic cholecystectomy? One would then go into the database and come up with several hundred thousand. So this program has been incredibly valuable in pointing out over a large group of patients which ones are most likely to develop a venous thromboembolism. Unfortunately, 15 years ago, the Caprini score wasn't completely validated to the point where it was incorporated into the NISQIP database. So we don't have some of the items that are very, very important uh, in that database. Nevertheless, that database is a great start to provide who might get and might not get prophylaxis. And I've already referred to low molecular weight heparin, and of course that's been the mainstay in surgical patients um, uh, for now over 25 years for preventing blood clots. There are a number of issues involved with this, and uh, to begin with, the Joint Commission Technical Advisory Panel was empowered to set up a criteria for monitoring of patients uh, that receive prophylaxis, that, that uh, got uh, blood clots, and one of the early objectives was giving patients anticoagulant prophylaxis within 24 hours of surgery if they were at risk. That the Caprini score has been validated, and I might mention, in 35,000 medical and surgical patients from five continents, and it's in 25 languages around the world. Truly, it is established as a worldwide uh, thrombosis scoring system to protect patients. The Joint Commission now recommends that if doctors do not provide prophylaxis, uh, stating that the patient isn't at risk, they have to do a risk assessment score, and the Caprini score is one of the scores that is most validated and is used for that process. So we're finally getting to the point of providing uh, thrombosis prophylaxis for the patients who are at risk. Boston University Hospital, they have used the Caprini score in a very unique way. They have an initiative where patients have to be, once they're admitted, evaluated and their ambulation at least three times a day has to be documented. Next, the use of pneumatic compression has to be documented. But thirdly, every dose of low molecular weight heparin for every time period in the right dose for the patient population has to be given through the entire period of hospitalization. And they divide people into various categories. Those people that have a very low risk and have four or less risk factors, they don't really require very much prophylaxis. Patients who have five to eight risk factors, they, are, they receive a low molecular weight heparin in addition to compression for seven to 10 days. And if they go home before that time, they get the low molecular weight heparin at home. If the patient has a risk score of nine or more, they receive 30 days of low molecular weight heparin. And that includes, of course, after discharge. The government uh, administrative bodies, including Medicare and Medicaid, and the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services is establishing establishing what are called uh, uh, no-clot incidents. And patients who develop a blood clot, under some cases, the hospitals have to pay for it and they will not be re reimbursed by Medicare. So you can understand how this program, if it's fully implemented, will lower the incidence of venous thromboembolism to a very small level and do so in an economically feasible fashion. We are hopeful that will get people to start using this score as a way to risk assess their patients. And by the way, I've always provided this score to anyone anywhere that wants to use it. I don't charge any fees. All I ask that it not be used for commercial purposes.